Stay rational and stay curious with Taha Khan. Education has been a matter of discussion for centuries. We've all expressed our views about it in many forms, with our friends, our teachers, and our family members. Yet, we never seem to articulate or narrow down what it exactly is. And to address this issue, I've done some research and interviewed some of the best at what they do in order to gain a deeper insight into this matter. In this video, I'll be covering what education is, its purpose, its value, the delivery, and funding of education. So if you're curious about why you were taught the things you were taught, and about the methods used in learning those things, you may find this video somewhat helpful, so stick around till the end. So what is education? Apart from the obvious, education is defined as an enlightening experience. It originates from the Latin word educare, meaning to nurture. John Dewey sees it as a process of living and not a preparation for future living. It is also viewed as a social institution that plays a central role in the social positioning of subjects. For a thorough definition though, check out what George F. Neller has to say. I cannot provide any universal definition as to what education is, because there is no clear consensus as to what's to be taught. Purpose why do we educate ourselves? What is the purpose of education? The Russian-born American author and philosopher Ayn Rand says that the only purpose of education is to teach a student how to live his life. And how does education achieve that? By teaching him how to acquire further knowledge by his own effort. We should also instill a certain amount of virtue in our curriculum as the most dangerous criminal may be the man gifted with reason but no morals. As to what virtue we are to expose our students to also agitated Aristotle about 2000 years ago. He writes, Men do not all prize most highly the same virtue, so naturally they differ also about the proper training for it. Whatever the virtue may be, one thing is for sure, that education isn't merely for the prospect of economic prosperity of its recipients, but rather also for human flourishment. A British philosopher, Harry Brighouse, proves this via income studies that beyond a certain threshold of $200,000 a year, there was no significant change in the lives led by American citizens. Education is one of the primary objectives of the United Nations Social Development Goals. But why? Well, it's pretty obvious. Without it, we would be no different to our fellow inhabitants in the animal kingdom. The delivery of education in most of our institutions seem outdated and insufficient. UNICEF reports that worldwide there are more non-learners in school than out of school and that schooling does not always lead to learning. The necessity of innovation in the delivery of education is an outgrowth at the pace at which we are technologically advancing and impacting our social interactions, which is evident in our current situation. Interestingly, the learning crisis doesn't solely stem from the lack of funding. This is evident from the failure of Bill Gates' Intensive Partnerships for Effective Teaching Initiative, which had cost more than a billion dollars. So what we need is smart investments in education over longer periods of time. Now, how do we address the learning crisis? Well, first off, our teachers, policymakers, and administrators should possess adequate philosophical understanding of what education is. Secondly, I'd like to argue that the creation of a resilient and effective education system isn't merely dependent on the relevant officials, but is rather achievable through the collective efforts of all the parties involved, including us. Why? Because it is paramount that young people are not only included, but are also recognized as valuable collaborators. Should education be funded via state subsidies, or should it be locally funded? This depends on whether we view education as a public or private good. As a public good, one's education does not trump another's. That is, education is to be provided equally to all citizens, free of cost, as it should be. Most learning theories adopted in public schools are outdated. So, children that are unable to receive public education naturally miss out on the various opportunities provided to the students in contemporary systems of education. Moreover, the curricula and teaching methodologies are greatly affected by the politics involved in state subsidies and endowments. This creates bureaucracies that develop their own interest and lobbying power. Another factor into the failure of state subsidies is the lack of incentive provided to teachers to perform well. And as a private good, one's education does trump another's. 
since there is competition. Here, education is misused as a conspicuous consumption. By the way, I've already written an essay covering all these points, which you can check out in the UNESCO's Voices of Youth website. This was a very fascinating subject for me to research about. I got to learn about the values of education and of its influence that it has over our lives. Surprisingly though, research in this discipline is fairly recent and scarce. I mean, the very first learning theory was formulated back in 1913. To put this in perspective, women weren't allowed to vote back then. Still, I lack a certain amount of insight in this matter and was fortunate enough to meet with Britain's very own boxing champion, Amir Khan. Here's what he had to say. So you studied from Smith Hill School in Bolton and from Bolton Community College. Right. Would you say that you were adequately supported by your teachers and administrators in pursuing your goals? And if so, what do you think could have been done differently? Um, no, you know, I have to say that the, the school definitely supported me when I was doing my boxing and everything. And we used to have these championships called the Schoolboy Championships around the UK. And uh, we had to be in school. So the school definitely, I always represented them when I used to fight. Uh, in the championships and they were supportive you know whenever I needed to take days off to travel uh, to different countries and fight or even when I had to take maybe the afternoon off to fight to, to do go to a boxing show they were very helpful they were very respected and very they, they knew that you know I'm, one, I'm not I'm not only doing it for myself but I'm doing it for the school's name as well so yeah, no, they were they were very helpful and very respectful for that, yeah. Right. This is interesting to me because schools mostly encourage STEM education over sports and other disciplines. My school helped me. They supported me, helped me on that. It's way. good. Schools should be supporting students like that. I mean, some schools, look, I think that nowadays, I think now slowly times are changing because this is where now schools are helping their students to go into uh, other national curriculums and going into different uh, fields, not only education. Maybe, you know, work hard in school, but still look at the other avenues as well. For a boxer, it's fair enough to say that he served as a good interlocutor. I also got a chance to interact with Ms. Bela Raza a uh, member of the Education Commission and a CEO of a public trust that actively pursues universal access and standard setting in education. Here are the questions that I asked. What can I, as a teenager, do to help improve quality education in our country? Uh, and considering scale of challenges uh, challenges in reforming the education sector, especially regarding the uh, regarding uh, teachers' training, what uh, what the provisional governments and international development organizations are doing, and how? And how does your organization contribute to that? Um, T. Tahak. Taha Khan, Bila Apa, Apo, 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 Evidently, I still have many questions left unanswered. And there's still a lot more about education that I do not know. For instance, what does the future of education look like? I believe it is through actively seeking knowledge that we can understand the matter. And I urge you to do the same. I'm here to learn and hopefully to help you learn in the process. Until next time, stay rational, stay curious. Peace.